If you're wondering where my reviews of a number of handsets are, I've been trying to get several in for review, and it looks like they'll be here in time for show 69. The Windows Mobile-powered Sony Ericsson Xperia X1 looks promising, but buggy, and not exactly speedy, while the proprietary OS C905 looks to be the best camera phone ever. I'll be pitching it head-to-head -head against the Nokia N82 and the Samsung Innovate. T-Mobile's G1 is available, but more problematic. I really want to be fair to Google and to Android as a promising new phone operating system, but my gut feeling is that it's way too early to evaluate this and that T-Mobile's G1 is a sorry excuse for a phone. The keyboard slide mechanism is noisy, primitive, and looks unlikely to last long. The camera is incredibly slow and produces appalling pictures, and the styling is retro and supremely ugly. While there are clearly major issues with the overall software package, not least that you could only install applications to the internal disk, which soon fills up. At least the Android OS looks smooth and generally capable, and the Google Services Sync is seamless, as you'd expect. More on Android in a future show. Symbian's Smartphone Show 2008 has come and gone. I was there, and it was a positive, if rather developer-focused event. You can see some of my video interviews from the show in my YouTube channel and on All About Symbian. Of specific note from the show was Samsung's launch of the i7110, in many ways a robust OLED-screened candy bar version of the Innovate. The stills camera is only 5 megapixels, but in most other regards this has more potential than any Samsung S60 handset so far. I'll have this in for review in Phone Show 69 as well. One has launched on Engage, a terrifically ambitious 3D real-time fighting game that deserves a trial if you have a, an Engage compatible handset. And talking of Engage, Electronic Arts has just announced FIFA 09, Spore Origins, Monopoly, Need for Speed, Undercover, Tiger Woods and Sims 3, so don't write Engage off. It's still early days for the phone games platform. Now this is the Nokia N96, a very significant device in lots of ways. Not perfect, but significant. I thought about developing a whole show to it, but uh, that might be a bit over the top and might annoy the uh, people who aren't interested in what Nokia are up to. So I'm going to be brief. If you want the full gory details on the N96, see my continuing review of it over on All About Symbian. Currently yeah, looking to end up at over 10,000 words. Why so many words? Well, the N96 has quite a few things that no other smartphone in the world can match. Here are the highlights. It has hardware decoders for video and digital audio streams. Most phones have to decode video and music using their processor, which takes up a lot more power and limits the bit rates and resolutions. The N96's electronics uh, blow away those limits. This thing can play back DVD quality video smoothly at desktop bit rates without breaking sweat. And indeed, using less power than a traditional phone decoding a low resolution video. It has a DVB-H digital TV tuner built in. Alas, only a handful of countries have this yet, but at least it's future proof. If, like me, you're in the UK with no DVB-H TV, then fear not, for real player has been tweaked and the relevant DRM mechanisms put in place in the N96 to run BBC iPlayer seamlessly and with full support for downloading its encrypted programs for watching later. In practice, this works superbly. You can load the 16 gigabytes of built-in memory with programs over the weekend or in the evenings, and then watch them on your daily commute or in break times without using any 3G data. Other novelties include a surprisingly useful kickstand on the back for video watching, and a lock unlock key on the top, plus some of Nokia's more cutting edge for them features such as dual LED flash, and full USB 2 transfer speeds. It's also slimmer at 17mm than the previous flagship, the N95 8GB, and has a micro SD card slot on the side, taking the potential storage to 48GB. Now, there's no way you're going to fill that. As always with Nokia, though, there are some downsides. The D-pad needs firm finger presses, the front music controls make for a very cluttered control pad that takes some getting used to. The battery life's not great for general smartphone use, with only 950 milliamp hours to power things. And the shutter key uh, has way too much travel on it for comfortable snapping. However, the 
pros do outweigh the cons for me here. The N96 has all the other usual Nokia S60 goodies. Many people won't even need to think about third-party software. Plus there's the spec level of the N95 to which 5 megapixel camera, uh, VGA video recording, GPS, Wi-Fi, universal plug and play, TV out. Although to be fair, some of these items are getting more common now in other 2009 spec phones. It's fast in operation once you've let it boot up properly. This can take over a minute. There's a lot of OS here and a lot of processes, so it's not a device to turn uh, off each night. The early firmware could do with a couple of bug fix firmware updates too. I had several errors, but thankfully we're talking over the air updates and UDP, that's user data preservation, so any such update should be completely painless from the user's point of view. The Nokia N96, it's gonna sell well to brand new media hungry smartphone users, but uh, I think real power users might want to give it a miss on account of the battery limitations. A Monty Python phrase I love to use is, and now for something completely different, which perfectly sums up this, the LG KT610, one of the latest QWERTY designs to come out in the Symbian world. It's different in that it's very small for a QWERTY clamshell and also in that the, the front cover is minimalist in the extreme. If that all sounds tempting, then don't be too tempted. The KT610 is very much built on the cheap. The good. It's well textured so that you simply can't drop it. And the external keypad is wonderful, especially if, like me, your eyesight is less than perfect after years with fiddling with computers. Uh, and the GPS works quite well. The bad. It's quite a long list, I'm afraid. The keyboard layout squeezes in a number row at the top, but at the expense of a space bar that's off to one side. And the stop and comma characters are on char key presses, i.e. they need two fingers. Go figure. The inside screen's only quarter VGA. The whole point of going to a clamshell is that you can stick in a wider display. Uh, I'd have expected at least a 400 pixel wide screen to try and squeeze a little more in. Multimedia is a no-go here, I'm afraid. The KT610 even has problems playing back videos captured with its own camera. Trying to stream video in, in low res 176 by 144 format from the built-in shortcut to the mobile YouTube site resulted in some horrible picture corruption. Trying to play even a standard quarter VGA video turned out to be completely impossible. Very 2003 spec. The camera's also old spec at two megapixels with no focus or flash. What does the KT610 think it is? An Apple iPhone? Only kidding, Apple fans, you know I like your own flagship. There's no Wi-Fi here. I'd gotten used to every smartphone in 2008 having this, so it's quite a wrench to only be able to connect over 3G or, or GPRS. Google Maps is built in, which is good, but you can't update it to the latest version, which is bad. It's accessed via a native Google launcher, which is pretty pointless since three of the four apps on it are just shortcuts to mobile web pages. All the standard S60 applications are here, uh, but as with the Samsung phones, it's a, a wrench to realize that Nokia's extras, such as podcasting, location tagger, sports tracker, etc., are all no go. At least there is a version of Nokia Maps, retitled Maps on Ovi. Google for it. Desktop connections are via proprietary LG connector here, which is bad. And this is also used for headphones, which is worse. The one redeeming factor is that you can actually charge over USB, something that I've been crying out for for a long time. Given the long list of worries, who's the KT610 aimed at? I'm not sure LG know, but I'd suggest the older generation. This, this, is the S60 phone to give your mum or dad. With less than perfect eyesight and less dexterous fingers, they'll be able to make calls and send messages uh, using the huge external keypad, while the limited outside screen does its best not to confuse them with unnecessary information. And when you do want to introduce them to some S60 staples or they decide that predictive text isn't for them, there's the full and obvious keyboard waiting inside. With S60, as you know and love it, you just know they're going to be giving you a slew of how do I do this calls. This is the LG KT610.